Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to try and resurrect a dead graphics card. So here we have a graphics card which is currently in a uh, deceased condition. This is a NVIDIA GTX 660 Ti, and it's the Gigabyte version, as you can see. And currently the card, uh, when you put it in the machine, doesn't boot up, doesn't do anything. The fans spin, so electrically we've still got power there, but that's all we've got. So what we're going to try and do is, we're going to try and reflow the solder on the graphics card by sticking it in the oven. Which is a method that some people have found a lot of use with uh, for graphics cards, um, laptops, especially with NVIDIA uh, GPUs, such as reballing techniques. So what we need to do is, first of all, we've got to take the graphics card apart. So we need to take off all the fans and the heat sink and clean off any uh, heat paste and get it ready to go in the oven. Also, what we need is some catering foil. Now you're going to need about six little uh, sort of 12 inch by 12 inch pieces. So you can roll them up into a ball to support the card when it's on a baking tray. And the oven will need to be preheated to a 385 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 five degrees centigrade. So, first things first, let's take this apart. So what we need to do is remove the four screws there, and then we should be able to remove the heat sink and fan assembly. So let's take the screws out. And that is too big. Now, luckily this graphics card is already very dead, so we don't have to worry about damaging it or ruining it. And being that it's quite an old card, if it does get destroyed, well, it's not the end of the world. And it's a fun experiment. Now, there's a couple more screws holding in the VRM cooler on. Put the screws to one side so we're nice and safe. So there's the CPU, or GPU rather. Let's unplug. Let's unplug that. That's one side, so there's our bare graphics card pretty much. So we're gonna clean up some of the heat paste, give it a quick wipe over and then get ready to stick it in the oven. So, heat paste luckily is uh, relatively uh, good at standing up to high temperatures. So, we don't have to worry about it coming off too much, but try and remove as much as we can. I suppose really we could have taken off the, um, the back plate as well. I don't know if that's going to make any difference to the actual process. Who knows? If we look at the card, it doesn't seem to be any, any obvious damage or any obvious marks that look like it's burnt out, which would be uh, causing it to stop working. Everything looks okay. And the card, I think, still looks relatively... Uh, relatively flat, doesn't look like it's got any major bends in it. So, next thing to do is to make up some little uh, balls to support the card on. So what these do is, because you need to put it in the oven on the baking tray, you need something to support the card to keep it off of the tray, just so that you get the hot air all around in theory. Obviously, if you've got a graphics card or laptop or any component which has died, and you're thinking, hey, that's a great idea, I'm gonna stick it in the oven. Think very carefully before you do. This is uh, basically a complete fluke thing if it works. Uh, the science isn't perfect, and really you should be using a proper oven 
with scientific tools, etc. But we haven't got that. But what we have got is a uh, 20 to $30 graphics card, which is dead, which we could resurrect. So I've spaced my balls out on the tray. Let's get them in a bit closer. Which way up should this be? I'm going to go this way, I think. Oh, I think one of my balls is a bit bigger than the other. So try and make sure your balls are all the same size. Or roughly the same size. Yeah, look at that. Okay. So as you can see, there's a bit of a gap underneath. So the, uh, the hot air can flow all the way around. Obviously, if you've got a fan oven as well, that's going to help the process. So let's stick it in the oven, like I said. Uh, oven has been preheated to 385 uh, Fahrenheit or 195 Celsius. And I don't know about if it goes on the, uh, the top tray or the bottom tray. I think we'll go, I don't know. What do you think, Kath? Top or bottom? No, oh, well, top it is. So very gently put it in there. And we'll put eight minutes on the timer, because that's what they say. It sh eight minutes should be enough to uh, do whatever it does. Now, best thing to do when you're doing this, make sure you've got your fans on and doors and windows open, because the heat, sorry, the, um, the PCB will melt a little bit and it will give off a vapor, which is another way of telling you that it's, uh, it's ready, or at least hot. So we're going to leave that running for eight minutes and we'll get back to you very shortly. Okay, so we're down to the last minute and you can kind of smell the, um, the baking happening. <sighs> Unfortunately, the vent of the thing is there. So <laughs> all the fumes are coming out, but down to our last uh, few seconds of baking time. This is definitely not the great British Bake Off. No, my luck, it'll be probably be the Great British Break Off. And there we go, that telltale noise means that we're done. So let's turn it off. <coughs> Bit fumey. Uh, oven gloves. You know, I forgot something. So let's see what our creations come out like. Let the uh, fumes dissipate. Oh wow, that smells horribly. Oh, there's a fair bit of heat coming off of that. You see, it doesn't seem to have damaged it in any way. It just feels really hot, which I'm gonna have to put this down because it's actually coming through the gloves. So there we go, there's our uh, NVIDIA Volavons. So now what we want to do is give it a little while to uh, cool back down to kind of room temperature before we start assembling the, uh, the fan assembly back on, get that back on, put some new heat paste on there, get it all screwed back up together and then stick it in a PC and uh, see if there's any life in the old dog. So. We'll be back when this cools down. Hi, this is Mike, we're back again, and we've put the graphics card back in the computer. Now, if you're not sure how to install a graphics card in a computer, uh, take a look up here at the link, and you can see how to install a graphics card. Uh, we've also cleaned it up a little bit as well, which uh, you can also click on the link up there, and it'll link you to the Super Clean Goo, which is a great thing for cleaning electrical components, and just in time for Christmas coming up, or Black Friday. But anyway, We've baked the graphics card at 195 degrees for eight minutes, roughly. It's cooled down, we've reassembled it, we've put a bit of heat paste on there, and now is the, uh, the moment of truth. Well, there's not a lot else I can say apart from let's turn it on and see what happens. Is that on? Yeah. Can't find the power button there. Eh? 
some signs of life. Fans are spinning. It's on HDMI at the moment, so it might take a while. Okay, let's plug in a VGA. Oh, crap. Can't plug in a VGA because we haven't got a VGA adapter. But the motherboard has, so let's see if the motherboard's fired up. Why do I always do this wrong? Right, so the PC's booting up through the onboard graphics, which means it's extremely likely that it's not detecting the external VGA, or external discrete graphics. So, let's turn it off. We'll change the BIOS settings, and we'll give it one more go. No, I think that pretty much sums up that this is a, uh, a myth busted. You can't rectify your graphics card by putting it in the oven. So that's been the GTX 6600 Ti. I've been Mike. This has been Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And this is how not to bake a graphics card. Thanks for watching.